M0FXB Hamtech, welcome to my videos on the Zygu G90 and today we're looking at the software made by Dan Y03GGX so this is free software but of course um, any donations are you know appreciated there are there are many different types of software that Dan makes but today we're on the G90 I'll, I will show you the connection process but I just want to show you it in action. So if you look at the G90 in the background top left and if I change the frequency you can see it's it's moving there no problem at all. Right, so just scrolling on my mouse at the moment. The only cable I've got connected is on the top left of the Zygu. Just here where my finger is, the bottom the bottom port okay that's the only cable and it's the blue one or it, mine has a blue usb connector that is plugged into my pc you, you use it for programming the firmware so if i right click on my windows square at the bottom here right click device manager and we've got the june the 6th commemorations there on 40 meters and i double click 40 uh, for, sorry, the ports you can see it's USB serial port COM30 and your COM number may be different. This software is very sophisticated so I'm learning it you know um, from the bottom up basically. There's a hell of a lot to learn if we look at the manual there's a big manual okay but I'm just gonna get you started uh, you know this device you've got client mode, server mode CFG builder tuner menu oh, it just goes on and on and on okay so there's a lot to learn and I highly recommend you take a real good look at the manual provided by Dan I'm on Windows 11 and let's just well, I've showed you that I can just change the the frequency we've got TX power here we can adjust it up and down look just by clicking there attenuator works preamp is working lock noise blank and now all these grids can be filled I haven't learned how to fill them we've got a disconnect button here and we can select different meters at the moment it's SWR meter we can change it to power and your meters are showing here look and you've got a secondary needle so I just go back to meter just here SWR and then we do the power keep it low for now and by clicking on the window it, it, it's like a back button and then let's move away from that frequency you can just click on the screen and type the frequency and press enter that works or you can click fast here and then as we scroll now it's a bit faster there's a quieter part there and now we can tune now I did have to man you can hear the tuner going there I did have to manually turn on the tuner on the radio but once it was on it's controlled you can see the SWR, see the SWR meter there went down in green so that's cool fast and then what else have we got here changing the band so we've got 40 meters here on the bottom left click that band memories you can add a memory. There you are. Let's add one now. Not sure where it's put it, but we've got. Oh, here is there. Look. There's your memories there. Look. Kia. And I noticed then it looked like it went straight to yeah CW when I press Kia. It looks like you can. You know you can add text. See. Q, CQ for example, add and then send. Look, that key pin is not set. Well, but you can do that. Then you can select what you're using as a microphone and PTT. We have got a PTT here, of course, and that is working. I'm just clicking it with my mouse and a PTT lock as well. You can lock it on. So we go back to make sure we're in mode so at the top right we've got mode and then different AGC's which you can see was working there 
yeah I can hear the difference click the, the window in your back and then back to tuning if we go to fast tune now on one image I saw there was a waterfall now maybe you can you can add you know just tuning now maybe you can add a waterfall but in the image I saw underneath here there was a waterfall okay so uh, maybe there's an add-on for that so let's show you how we actually got this first thing you do is go to this link here yo3ggx.ro here and you get to this page here and of course there is a lot of work and a lot of time has been put into this please remember that scrolling down at the top you'll see the the probably more the more popular well we've all heard of pocket rxtx basically so the first one here is pocket rxtx5 at the very top the next one down is the one that i'm using now jarek version 4.2 and there's you know different download versions here and a user guide and there again is the again using the pocket rx tx so the see the way that on this image here was seeing the waterfall so that's the bit um that's the icon 7300 that's the bit i haven't learned how to do it says it in direct mode so hopefully uh someone will let me know how to get the waterfall working because of course that's a lovely feature um i will keep trying but anyway then you've got um the pocket rx tx the one we've all seen as there is a blue vna version as well and some more some more um some more work that's been done here so looks like there we've got experimental server so fascinating lots of work very interesting if you know to me and we'll be trying out as many as we can so the way i installed this i went to my 64 bit here let's have a look now here at the top 64 bit okay and i clicked that i've noticed that it, we've got linux here apparently this software works on mac as well so take a look at that if you can see there it is there mac mac i'm going to click windows i'm on windows 11 click you get this zip and then what i did with the zip I made a space on my desktop. I went right click and I selected new folder. So you go right click, new folder, there you are. And I called it Jarek. I've already done this, but anyway, Jarek. Call this one two. Click okay. Then went to the download, clicked the zip like so and extracted chose extract here extract to okay now there is I noticed there is a run debug bat here right on the screen I'm pretty sure you could probably just double click that but I'm just going to do it anyway extract to and then go to the folder which is Jarek 2 which is on my desktop desktop Jarek, where is it? I'll find it. Jarek 2, they are. Okay. Let me just close my one down. Okay. And then I'll, I will double click it, but I, just to see if it fires up. Press any key to continue. looking now yeah there it is there okay and there's your window but anyway I extracted it let's go to the folder that we ex extracted it to and at the bottom here it just says run debug so run this one here at the bottom I recommend that you do put it into a folder myself so I'm going to run it and you get the warning run anyway and then this window opens and it will open there you are and when you first start off it's going to ask you for a profile name and I would say it makes sense each time you put a profile into to type the, the radio you're going to use so I'm going to put in G90 in direct mode that's 
profile. I'm going to call this first, and you can have more than one profile. Click OK, and then it asks you to create a folder. I'm just going to call it the G90 folder. Save. You get to this window. So we've plugged in our radio, as I said earlier. Right click, device manager. It's the cable that you use for doing the firmware and it's plugged into the bottom hole in the head unit. So ports and it's still 30 as before. So cat serial port 30. Board rate, I selected 19200. Didn't tick anything else. I didn't even um, tick for the microphone selections here. I just left it all as that and I clicked. Uh, the next thing you have to do is upload the radio you're going to use. So you go File, Download, it's called Download Radio. Now this is all built into the system by, by Dan. So go down and go to Zygu. And there's more than one model, G90106 and the X6100. So I might have a go with the X6100 soon, but let's do the G90 first. Download. And then it says radio configuration file was downloaded. Click OK. Then I clicked, pretty sure that was it. You can auto start if you want. I didn't change anything, so it still says PTT cat, but you can select RTS and DTR. You've got a key there, and I just went start. OK, and it just came. One more step is to go to connect here, and there you are. It came to life. and. The volume at the moment, it's coming out of it's coming out of the radio at the moment. We've got a call log here. Click OK. Give the file a name. G90. Save. You get another window open with the core lock. You know, I've not used it, so M0FXB. Andreas, locator, IO81, UK for now. But, you know, so you get all the Western Superman. UK, there you go, save, you've got a log, uh, what's more data, <laughs> uh, okay, well, call sign, call log, anyway, you get the idea, you've got a call log, and you've got QRZ there as well, you know I'm calling in the background there, go fast, We try a different band. You can hear it changing band. You can see it changing band as well. So give it a go. I mean, I'm brand new to it as well. Oh, you want USB? Click up there for that. Memory's key. So yeah, the key one is the how do we get the van, the waterfall working? See the way I can't turn the tuner on at the moment, so I have to manually turn it on on the radio. Once it's on, oh, it's not working now. Is that because I'm out of band? I don't know. It's probably a reason. It's letting me. It's letting me. Um, Maybe it's because I'm the antenna's way out. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't want to confuse you too much. As you can see, I've only just done this myself. But, you know, just for... You plug the cable in, you run that bit of software, and away you go. And it does give you, like... I've noticed that there's um, a running commentary on, on all this kind of stuff. Bye for now, 73.